Ah, greetings. Uh, this may be a very controversial video, so I'm gonna title this video, this may be a controversial video. Um, and what's controversial about this video, I'm gonna say some very hard truths. Uh, okay, uh, hard truth number one. Uh, families are very cold. What do you mean by that, you may ask? Well, your family is that, um, well, this is from my experience, but maybe out there there's families that are very cohesive towards each other and their family dynamics is not as dysfunctional, but nearly every family dynamic is extremely dysfunctional. <laughs> it's very hard to find one that isn't, but there might be one out there that, that is not um, as dysfunctional or there's desire for everyone in the family to love God and desire for them to solve each other. Um, if there is, if there's a family, if there is a family like that, God bless you, because uh, it's extremely rare. Um, so a couple of controversial things I'm going to talk about is is that the dysfunctional family unit uh, dynamics. Um, I won't go in much detail because there's so much to cover. It take like maybe fifty minutes for me to cover it all. Um, but I'm just gonna do a brief summary and the reason why your family dynamics is dysfunctional is, is quite simple um, you have people who have children for selfish reasons and then their children then end up witnessing the dynamics of how the mother and the father treat each other and it's usually one that isn't built on like um, built on like a, a strong foundation on Christ where you have the father who is the head then you have the wife and then you have the children most families are so dysfunctional, it's actually the children that lead the household, not the father. Or it's the, or it's the mother that leads the father and the children influence the mother and it's actually the children who are the head of the household. It usually ends up with the children. Because the, it's kind of, when you allow the mother to be the head, she then gets suspended by the children because she loves her children. So therefore the children tend to make a the mother and then the father then did you know, I have a lot of family dynamics, I come from one. Um, alright, so it's, that's dysfunctional, so it's very rarely, I've only like the last year saw like a family dynamic the first time in life, like with a father was ahead of the household and it completely shocked me because I I've never seen this before and the way that to bring up the children in Christ it is something that I've never seen where the actually children are actually getting disciplined properly, it's not disciplined out of fear, it's actually getting disciplined out of love, a biblical discipline. Uh, so um, they teaches the children boundaries at a very young age and um, it also tackles the children's sins so the children don't become too covetous or they, become, they understand right and wrong at a very young age. So any manipulation things are just completely cut out because both parents are a team. So what happens is with children, because children are very, I like this, uh, children can see if they're is um, if both parents aren't in safe live linked. So if there isn't any clear authority in the household, then the children then can pit one person against another person. Um, so uh, because the father should be the head of the household, then the, the mother and then the children, but now it's mostly children, mother, father. And it's sad to see that case and that's why you have many generations of men because they weren't brought with clear male father figures in their life they develop more feminine traits because they're more influenced by the mother if you as a son were more influenced by your mother than your father like example me I was more influenced by well, say more my mother than my father but actually more by the television <laughs> so TV mostly influenced me uh, to more extent, a bit maybe outside all of the members in the, in the extended family, but um, you, you as a son, you your father should be the number one influence in your life as a father figure. When you look at your father, that should set the, the example of how you then are to behave as a man when you get older, and see, well, a daughter, vice versa with with the mother, but also how uh, how you as a son see like. Your mother treats your father is an indication of how your future wife should talk to you. So if there's no submissive in the home, if there's no like the witness submits, the witness to be selfless, 
it, you know, with the husband and wife, if there's not really much of that in the family home, then when you get older, you don't really have an idea of what like a loving marriage is supposed to be. You've, I have an example of what a stable marriage is, but both my parents, um, um, Eros love each other, they both uh, fully love each other, um, but they don't like happy love each other. So they have two loves, but not the main one, because you only get that uh, through God. And um, yeah, very, very few marriages are like that, because they, they kind of reject that. They, they reject the truth, so they kind of do things their own way. So their foundation of marriage is built on either tree, uh, so it's more stable than say marriage where um, one person is um, using the other person and it's kind of um, not, not as stable, there's a lot of other kind of sin involved in things, so it, it's not as stable that relationship, it's more abuse involved in things, or physical abuse and you know, and other things. Um, so a marriage that is more kind of founded on, based on Christianity is much stronger than one that isn't. Um, but even then it's not, you know. So we have a lot of things now where women are told to be like men, men are told to be women, and people are so shocked in the why so many people struggle to find mates. Because women, naturally, the way God created them, I designed to go after men that are masculine. Sadly, the most masculine type men happen to be very abusive type masculine men. Because <laughs> they didn't have a proper father figure in their life. So, um, yeah, so the more aggressive, the more the show, more type masculine traits, but not the good kind. So the, those women tend to be attractive because they tend to be more leader, they tend to be more kind of in charge, but they, they, they have no idea how to treat a woman. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the thing, because they weren't brought up in a home where they had an example of how their parents interact with each other. So they have like masculine traits in them. They have like the ability to lead, because any man could, if he's put to walk, if the walk sacrifice and it develop like masculine traits, and but the the thing that's missing is that if it's not masculine traits that are founded in what a godly man is, because you can have a godly man that has like strong masculine traits and leadership qualities. Very well, very few men have that. Uh, <laughs> Most men that have masculine traits have like what I call the extreme toxic masculine traits which comes from what the world considers masculine um, which ends up being very abusive and dangerous. Um, they're, they're very assaultive and things but it's, it's more controlling. Uh, they don't view women as a gift from God because they don't believe in God and if you don't believe in God then you're not going to like see everything as a gift and therefore you're not going to be as um, appreciative or understanding of it. Um, so that's what's happened because when humans go their own way, they end up forming relationships and it's end up based on emotions. And if, if your relationship is based on emotions, then that's a that's a foundation that's quickly gonna fall apart. Because like I you know, if you're only in a relationship where you have to the other part or your partner has to always be happy, then that's a relationship that's doomed from the beginning because he he here's, here's the truth about all humans, all emotions fluctuate all the time so if you're only with someone because you want to be happy all the time that that is something that they cannot constantly give you it's impossible because it, it, it's too much for them to give you it's impossible because uh, it, your happiness should come from something far greater than yourself it should come from god your joy should come from god because then when you can find contentment and everything that's thrown at you you can find contentment um, otherwise, if only with someone because you just want the happy, buzzy kind of rainbows, to, uh, kind of uh, uh, um, feeling all the time, then that is a deep delusion. You should love someone because you choose to love them, because you, you make a commitment, you make a covenant with God to love them because you chose this person out of your heart to love them, to selflessly love them. And if two people do that, then they're going to have a strong marriage, strong bond. But if the bond is based on anything else outside of God, it's going to crumble. The only second type of strongest um, bond you can have outside of God is idol tree, where two people put themselves as one in their life. So uh, they, they put, put each other in that way. But here's the problem what happens. So if one of them dies, it completely pff, 
crush is dim or they they then they then they cling on to the memories and the memories become a part of idol tree or they go visit their grave and therefore their 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 death becomes a part of idol tree. So in a way it's always built an idol tree but in the end both shall die and their love was the never know and it's quite tragic the majority of relationships, majority of marriages are marriages that never knew God. They never had like the love and God in them and God is love so a marriage without love is a marriage that is dead. And sadly 99 possibly my estimate percentage of marriages never had love in them to begin with. They had other loves but not actually love that you know, comes from God, like happy love. They, had, they may have had like Eros love, which is the love of uh, romantic love, or they may have had like uh, Stoke love or Fide love, friendship love, but they never had a Gappy love, um, which, is, which is tragic, um, because that is a tragic thing, because I see like many couples and, and I witness them, and uh, if you were just to, how they talk to each other would just break your heart. And, um, and if there's a consistency of that, it's it just breaks your heart. And um, many relationships, by from girlfriends, their relationships are not built on 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 the gap of love, and it's just heartbreaking because you don't need to be a genius to predict what what's gonna come come down the road if if any challenges come down the road because the, the 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 bond is not as strong as they perceive in the mind to be or in the heart to be because your heart's deceived for because your heart's deceived for you project onto the other person. And you also don't realize how like unstable your foundation of relationship is, because many people think they have a strong foundation, but when it's tested, then it's proved un otherwise. Anyway, um, thanks for watching this very controversial video, and I hope it was a bit of an insight for you, and um, and just some very grateful for you watching, and may the rest of the day be a blessing towards you.